Hello, we're now going to have a look at graphical user interfaces. I should just point out that I am no designer, and I I know what looks nice, maybe, but I struggle to create that myself. If you are a designer, then probably just ignore this lesson. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be able to tell you anything that you, you don't already know, um, and probably be able to uh, manage far better than me. So graphical user interface, broken down into three letters, G-U-I, pronounced GUI. It just means graphical user interface. If you are going to be creating any kind of interface, then consistency is probably the most important thing. There's a whole load of principles, but the most important is just keep it simple. It's a conversation, so you want some sort of feedback. So if I've got a close button, make sure that it's always in the same place. I don't have another button that does a similar thing, which is called return, or a third one which is called exit, that would be really confusing to people and they wouldn't know where they would need to click or what that would do. Colours. Again, you want to be, uh, you want to keep things simple. You don't want to make a big splash here because frankly it's kind of, it makes you blink a little. If you need to use colours, um, try and use subdued versions of those colours. If you find that just too insipid, you'd want to create something that's slightly slightly better, maybe just create one colour. But if you can get things to do more than one bit of work, then that's good. So if you can use your colour to give you give the user an idea about where they are from a navigation point of view, so which screen they are, information may be green, um, processing stuff may be red, other stuff may be blue. You're getting a, a, a more of a feedback for people and they can then work out uh, from a conversational point of view where they are within the system. Fonts two main different types of fonts. Um, there's the serif, and the serifs are these little kind of pointy things. Um, and if you removed the serifs from the font, it would be a sans serif font. And a sans serif font, sans just means without, um, so without the serifs. Generally, for most websites, sans serif looks a bit better. It looks, it looks a bit cleaner, um, and the, the, the serif ones can look slightly older. Jargon-free, if you've got a lot of text that needs to be there or a lot of things that need and to be described, put them in a way that everyone can understand. If you've got an option from rather than using a load of words, you can use a graphic, then use that graphic. It's much easier for the brain to process graphics than it is to um, understand words, so it's, it's quicker from a feedback point of view. The whole idea of the, of the GUI is that it's taking your, your old desktop and kind of transferring that into the modern world and putting that kind of on the on the computer. Therefore, it's trying to, to do the same kind of jobs. It wasn't always the case. In the earlier days, of course, you had no screen at all. You were purely based on kind of the printouts. You could make these kind of daft pictures using uh, letters, symbols, and numbers. But the first computing stuff that I really got working with was on a command line, which was a digital operating system, or DOS, where you could only just type things out. You couldn't have graphics in those days because the computers in those days didn't have things called graphics cards. So the graphics cards allows people to, to look at graphics, so to manage graphics, uh, and basically just faster computers can do that. The first graphical user interface came through in the 1970s. It came from the Xerox Park, uh, and it was called Alto, and they kind of created the first computer that used all the fundamental things we see in computers these days. So they would have had the mouse, the idea of Windows, the idea of these folders within Windows, and you can copy things by dragging them from one place to the other, and of course you can delete things in a trash can down there as well. The fundamental things we see in the, the GUIs today were all kind of developed back in the 1970s, which seems amazing, doesn't it? It's important about the feedback you give to the users and how they work. There's a firm term called affordance. If I've got three light bulbs here, maybe it's obvious for the middle switch, but I don't know from these other switches, so this bottom switch here, which light bulb is it going to light? Is it going to be the one on the left or the one on the right? Um, maybe that wouldn't be the one that you guessed. So just repositioning those light switches in a way that they mapped what the positions of the light bulbs. And this name affordance came from a guy called Donald Norman, and it was in a book called The Design of Everyday Things. I would probably say it's not, it was worth a read. It's definitely worth kind of um, seeking out because it gives you a bit of an idea of how important design is in everyday, everyday things. Okay, we've been looking at graphical user interfaces. Thank you for listening.